broadcasting from the basement of La Penta, it's WICR. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Sports Vault. Jersey Joe Archino back here. And really, the English Premier League season just continues to push further and further along. But I think so far this season, for whatever the amount we've seen, I think we can define it in one word so far. And I think it's the word that defined last season as well, and that is community. Last season, obviously, Leicester City Football Club pulling off one of the most remarkable upsets we've seen in sports history. Maybe the biggest, defying the odds, overcoming 5,000 to 1 title odds, and doing just that, winning the English Premier League title. Now, I think this season, Manchester City, obviously, they're the league leaders. Five wins from five, full 15 points. Pep Guardiola has done remarkable things with that club. But it's the reason that they're winning is the same reason that Leicester won last season. It's because there is a sense of community that is now instilled there. Last season, it was very easy to identify what Manchester City's problems were. There was no bond. There was no unity. And I think, to me, I I kind of have a formula, and it's connection plus community equals winning. I think in world football, I think that really is one of the biggest things, and and Pep Guardiola really is such a big arc, arc, like a, a guy who cultivates that. When you look at him at Barcelona, that sense of community was there. At Bayern Munich, that sense of community was instilled. And now, once again, here at Manchester City, you see that sense of community that is there once again. It's not an easy thing to do in, in, in world football because the egos are so big. There's so much money into it. There's, and especially when you're at a big-name club, when you have the ability to spend and have so many big-name players, it can be difficult to control the room and get all those players on the same page. And most important, get them to like each other. But Pep Guardiola, when he came in from day one, said something very clear. And to him... Before you could focus on the tactics, before you could even discuss anything else, it was all about creating a team spirit. To him, that was the thing that had to take precedent over anything else, and I think the large reason why Manchester City is in first place is because they have that sense of community instilled there, and it's something not everyone else has right now. I look at Everton now in second place. Everton has been very good. Uh, To me, I didn't have Everton inside my top 10 at the start of the season, but that's probably one of the ones I will be proven wrong on. They really look like they are climbing up to a very good position. Romelu Lukaku has gone off to a great start this year. One of the reasons I was uncertain about Everton was losing a guy like John Stones, and obviously... When you're a club like Everton, who has so much good young talent, guys like Barkley, guys like who they had stones, you worry about that talent being purged from the bigger name clubs. And obviously with stones, I think we all knew, and there was no surprise when it happened, John Stones was going to make the move to Manchester City, and he did. But that really hasn't been anything that has prevented Everton from being what they are right now. And they still have been able to hold on to a tremendous amount of talent. There's new management there, which I think is one of the biggest reasons for it. But Everton really has been terrific so far this season. I do think they're in store for a very, very big year. Tottenham right after that in third place. And Tottenham is an interesting one because obviously... When you look at the Champions League days one and two, they have been they were one of the most disappointing ones, not being able to pull out a win at home. But I think it's going to be a challenging season for them. It's going to be a good season for them in the Premier League. But balancing the Champions League with the Premier League when you haven't been there in a long time, it's very, very difficult. And to me, I had Tottenham around a fourth, fifth place finish. And the biggest reason for that is because of the them having to have to balance the Champions League with the Premier League. Again, if you're Man City, if you're one of these top-tier clubs who's consistently doing it, that's a lot different than being Tottenham, who broke a dry spell and is now finally back in that competition. You have Arsenal right after that, and Arsenal is kind of on their knees praying right now that they're in fourth place because the start to the season for them was miserable. And I think the, the Arsenal Wenger's seat had never been hotter. I still think 
change is needed there, and when it's all said and done, I don't think Arsenal will finish within the top three. I had them finishing in the top uh, in third place when the season started. I no longer think that. I do think that Chelsea will overcome and be able to do that, but even another club like Liverpool now, who I had finishing around the seventh spot, they look like now they're continuing to even get better, and they could overcome a side like Arsenal. Sometimes you just know what you are, and we know what Arsenal is. It's the same thing they have been. The title was theirs for the taking last season, but the reason they didn't win it is because that sense of community did not exist there. Arsene Wenger, sometimes you just overstay your welcome at a place, and he's been there for so long now without the results, and without the results, there's just really no reason for him to continue to be there, but Right after Arsenal, you do have Chelsea, and I loved, loved Chelsea at the beginning of the season. They've really, they've had a little bit of of trouble now losing to Liverpool just last Friday, and it was a huge win for Liverpool there. But I look at Chelsea, and the fact that they really aren't playing, don't have the Champions League or some other burdens against them, and really their sole focus can be on the Premier League, I think that's huge for them. This is a club that has such an uh, incredible amount of talent. Eden Hazard's had a very good start to the season. Diego Costa is still scoring goals left and right. So, and, and of course, the X factor for them is Antonio Conte, and Yeah, it was a difficult loss for them against Liverpool, but I do think they rebound, and they just, same thing with Liverpool. Liverpool and Chelsea, Liverpool being right behind Chelsea in the sixth spot, Liverpool doesn't have those burdens that a lot of these, uh, these other clubs have. It's not a burden if you can handle it, but if you're not in position to win multiple trophies, the Champions League, in addition to the winning the hardest league in the world, which is the Premier League, can become a giant burden. And to Liverpool... They don't have to worry about that now. Jurgen Klopp can just worry about growing this team, continuing to get them better and better. And I think Conte with Chelsea and then Klopp with Liverpool are in really, really good spots now, not having to worry about those other competitions. Their sole focus should be on the Premier League, and they have the ability to really do well in this league. But I still don't think anyone will be. I At the beginning of the season, I had City winning it all. And based on what I've seen, I'm looking pretty good so far. But there is a lot of play that still needs to happen. But I still feel very comfortable with that pick. Then in the seventh spot, which is such different from what it was just a few time, a few weeks ago, Manchester United. And sometimes one loss can really deflate you for a long period of time. And I think losing the Derby at Old Trafford when they had so much momentum, had so much steam really, really hurt them badly. They really have not been able to recover from that loss. After losing to City, they lose, of course, in the Europa League, and then they lose to Watford this past weekend. But it's a difficult situation because... We're still. Everyone's still waiting for Paul Pogba to really have that signature performance. I think he's played well in stretches. Obviously, the goals haven't come yet, but even at Juventus, if you really watch Paul Pogba, that's not his game. His game's not being the offensive catalyst for a club. His game is being able to make plays and be able to create chances for other people and just his really dominant possession with the ball. And I think now United fans, with all the money that they paid for him, are kind of waiting for those numbers to go up now but it's going to take him a little bit of time not everybody works the same way and of course he's not recovering from the best summer where in Euro 2016 France lost and he just wasn't at his best I think tactically he just wasn't in the right place a lot of times because of the manager but I think more than anything United's fans it's not. It's a little bit of a slippery slope right now, and obviously Wayne Rooney has been one of the biggest people who've been scrutinized the most. And if there's anything you can say about everything that's happened with Mourinho, I mean Zlatan Ibrahimovic has been incredible. He's gotten so much discussion, so much talking. Marcus Rashford, his continued growth gets talked about at every twist and turn. Paul Pogba, his creativity, not so much the goal scoring, but then Wayne Rooney. What's happened to the captain? I mean, it seems like he's the one of the guys who's really struggled with this adjustment. And obviously Mourinho, again, he's as good as it gets. He's going to get this figured out. But Wayne Rooney is one of those guys where I thought having a guy like Zlatan, having a guy like Pogba, having some of these other new pieces was only going to make Rooney's job easier. 
but it seems like it's been quite the opposite, and now he's struggling to fit in more now than ever. And I do think his play has declined just a bit the past few seasons. And more than anything, sometimes Rooney's at his best when he just doesn't have to worry about leading and he can just go out there, focus on his game and play. And to me, he struggled with that with that degree to a degree a little bit now. But United has a lot of questions that they certainly need to address right now. Crystal Palace in eight, Watford at nine, and West Brom at ten now. I'm very happy Crystal Palace is at 8 because based on their start of the season, I had them finishing in 10th place, and I thought I really could be way off with that, but they have recovered from that a little bit nicely. If you ask me, though, and I have been asked this question a couple times, who's been your biggest disappointment? By far, and I think this is most people's, West Ham United. I had West Ham finishing in about 8th place, I believe I had. Crystal Palace at 10, I had Stoke City at 9, and then I had West Ham at t- at uh, 8. But when you look at West Ham, I mean, obviously, the excuses really aren't there when it comes to it. They have good players. They're, not, they're obviously not top tier like some of the top five clubs in this league. I mean, they look, there are six or six clubs in in the Premier League who are just a cut above everyone else. And then there after that, there's a window of competitive, pretty good clubs. But there are six or seven giants who just stand far and above the rest. But West Ham was one of those clubs where you felt like they were on the cusp of possibly slipping into that spot. But it has been a miserable start to the season for them. In 18th place, again, it is so early in the season, but... You do have to be concerned with what you've seen from West Ham. And I think the biggest thing that you want to be worried about is just the, the mental toughness that they've shown. I mean, the the fact that they still haven't been able to put this together, having now a new stadium that they're trying to break in, it's been very disappointing for West Ham United, to say the least. I know the faithful, and they have a, such a good fan base there. So um, this summer, I mean, I did a lot of content leading up to the Premier League, and I interacted with a lot of West Ham fans, and I, I just loved it because you could see the, the passion there and just a very realistic fan base who just believed that their club was taking that next step forward. And I agreed. I thought West Ham was on the door and on the footstep of really taking that next step, but it hasn't happened for them. And if I had to chalk it down to one word, I would say, again, community. That formula really does exist, and it holds true no matter when you try. It's community plus connection equals winning. You have to do those things to get yourself in the right position. And I think when you look at the managers at the top of the helm of this league right now, They've really done a great job at doing that. But there has been no one who has done that like Pep Guardiola. But that's because there is only one Pep Guardiola. But until the next time, Jersey Joe Archino here with the Sports Fault. You can follow me on Twitter at Joe Archino and on Instagram, Jersey underscore Archino. And I'll catch everybody in the next segment.